Hello everyone, in today's class we will learn about functional components of computer memory unit. A memory or primary storage works with the CPU to hold instructions and the data in order to be processed. Memory keeps the instructions and data for whatever programs you happen to be using at the moment. Memory is the first place where the data and instructions are placed after being input. Processed information is also placed in the memory to be returned to the output device. So memory is widely used during processing starting from the input to the output unit. It is very important to know that memory can hold data only temporarily because it requires continuous flow of electric current. If current is interrupted, data is lost. So generally for the primary memory, it works with a continuous electrical current and in case the power is interrupted, then the data stored within will be lost. A memory of a computer is more like a predefined working place where it temporarily stores information and data to facilitate its performance. When the task is performed, it clears the memory and memory space is then available for the next task to be performed. So the primary memory generally clears off as and when required whenever the instructions and the data are no longer needed to be stored in the memory. The memory clears them off so that the space will be available for the next instructions to be loaded. The memory of a computer can be thought of as cells. You can consider in this example, these are the smallest individual unit of the computer system. The smallest individual unit of the computer system is known as a bit or a cell. You call bit as a binary digit. That means either 1 and 0 can be stored within it. When you have a collection of 4 bits, you can, it, you can call it as 1 label. And when you have 2 labels or 8 bits, you will call it as 1 byte. A memory cell may be defined as a device which can store a symbol selected from the set of symbols known as 0 or 1. Almost all memory devices work in the basic mechanism that is every memory device divides itself into an equally size of 1 byte each. So the memory is actually divided into 1 1 byte each while every byte is having a byte number. This byte number or default in other words as a memory address basically identifies the block during processing and each block of one byte consists of 8 bits within it which stores the information in a form of 0 and 1. This one byte is used to represent any number by using the combination of 1s or zeros. In each memory, every byte will be represented by a unique byte number starting from 0. This unique number is referred to as an index or a memory location and it is used to read or write the data and information. That's in an example. Here you can see the n number of memory addresses. Each memory address is of exactly one byte each and every byte is numbered starting from zero. So the memory locations are numbered starting, always starting from zero. Here you can see starting from zero up to whatever last number comes up depending on the size of the memory. And each byte consists of the eight bits which stores the information in a form of one and zero. We know that every file represented in an operating system is basically a bunch of bytes. So whatever file we are storing in computer is basically a collection of characters or a bunch of bytes. That means printable or non-printable characters. Whether it is a text, audio, video or graphic file, it contains characters only. To represent each character in a memory which uses either one byte or two byte depending upon the architecture. If it uses one byte, then let's understand one example of a1.txt, how it is being stored. Assume that a1.txt there is notepad file containing the abc text. Now in this file, it contains abc text. The file will occupy three bytes if we consider one byte per character storage. It will represent each character using the symbols R. We already studied about the ASCII number Unicode as well as ISCII concepts. So capital is numbered with 65. That's for the unique identifying number through which computer identify that this character is capital A and the binary equivalent for 65 0 1 5 times 0 and 1 so in order to store A the memory location assume that 501 is used so 501 will store the binary of the 65 that is what representing capital A same way the B is being represented in ASCII as 66 and the binary equivalent is 0 1 4 times 0 1 0 this will be stored in the next byte that is 502 and same way, the C will get stored with 67, whose binary is 0, 1, 4 times 0, 1, 1. This will get stored in the next byte, that is 503 number byte. That's how the information are represented within memory.
A memory can be measured under the following measurement units. That means a bit is the smallest unit of memory, whereas a nibble is a collection of four bits, a byte is a collection of eight bits, or two nibbles, and other memory measurement units are as follows. You can see one bit or a bit, there is binary digit, zero or one can be stored within it. One nibble is a collection of four bits, one byte is a collection of eight bits, one KB is a collection of one zero two four bytes. 1 MB is a collection of 1024 kilobytes. 1 gigabytes equals to 1024 megabytes. 1 terabytes which is equivalent to 1024 gigabytes. 1 petabyte equals to 1024 terabytes. 1 exabyte equals to 1024 terabytes. 1 zettabyte equals to 1024 exabyte. 1 yottabyte equals to 1024 zettabyte. And 1 brontobyte equals to 1024 yottabyte. And 1 geobyte equals to 1024 bronto. But, and so on but we have reached and we have seen the technology for the storage devices up to certain terabytes the exabyte, petabyte, gigabyte, bronto and geobytes are used by the servers like uh, google, facebook, yahoo and so on memory is one of the most important things that is incorporated into computers be it a laptop, computer or a pc there are various types of computer memory that can be installed depending upon the actual need for functioning and specification of the system. The memory relates to the many devices and components that are responsible for storing data and applications on a temporary or a permanent basis. Based on this concept, that is easier to store the data on permanent basis or temporarily, the memory is divided into the main two categories as the primary memory and secondary memory. The primary memory stores the information for temporary purpose and the secondary memory stores the information on permanent basis. Primary memory. It is accessible directly by the processing unit, that is the CPU. Random access memory is an example of the primary memory. As soon as the computer is switched off, the contents of the primary memory generally is lost. You can store and retrieve data much faster with primary memory compared to the secondary memory. Primary memory is more expensive than the secondary memory because of its size of primary memory is less than that of secondary memory. Computer memory is used to store two things that is instructions to execute a program and the data. When the computer is doing any job, the data that have to be processed are stored in the primary memory. This data may come from the input devices like keyboard or from the secondary storage for processing. Random access memory. The primary storage is referred to as the random access memory. We call it as an abbreviated term RAM. Because it is possible to randomly select and use any location of the memory directly store and retrieve the data. It is also called read write memory. The storage of the data and instructions inside the primary storage is temporary. It disappears from the random access memory as soon as the power of the computer is switched off. The memories which lose the content on failure of the power supply are known as volatile memories. So random access memories are volatile memories. So now you can say that RAM is a volatile memory. There are two main types of random access memories known as dynamic random access memory, the abbreviated term is DRAM and the static random access memory, the abbreviated term is SRAM. The DRAM, pronounced as DRAM, is widely used as a computer main memory. Each DRAM memory cell is made up of transistor and capacitor within an integrated circuit. So, a technology used for DRAM is containing transistors and capacitors. And a data bit is stored in a capacitor. So the information are stored in capacitor. Since transistors always leak a small amount, the capacitors will slowly discharge causing information stored in it to drain. Hence, DRAM has to be refreshed given a new electric charge every few milliseconds to retain the data. So, the capacitor and the transistors will lose some amount of charge after some period of time. That is why DRAM refreshing is introduced in order to verify each and every capacitor within the memory is charged or discharged. And if it is in charge state, then the state will be charged again and in case a capacitor or transistor is discharged mode then it remains in discharge mode that's how the DRAM refreshing saves the loss of data the SRAM on other hand pronounced as SRAM is made up of 4 to 6 transistors it keeps data in the memory as long as power is supplied to the system unlike DRAM which 
has to be replaced periodically. As such, SRAM it is faster but more expensive, making VRAM the more prevalent memory in the computer system. Let's understand the difference between static and dynamic random access memories. The static RAM made up of flip-flops, the dynamic RAM is made up of the capacitors. The static RAM is large in size, whereas dynamic is small in size. The static RAM data stored in a form of voltage and in dynamic RAM the data stored in a form of charge. Static RAM is much expensive as compared to the DRAM that is dynamic RAM and dynamic RAM less expensive as compared to that of static RAM. Static RAM has low storage capacity whereas dynamic RAM is having higher storage capacity. Static RAM consumes more power whereas dynamic RAM consumes less power. The static RAM is faster in processing whereas the dynamic RAM is little bit slower. Static RAM has a data sustained with time whereas dynamic RAM data loses with time so need refreshing circuit. Read-only memory. There is another memory in the computer which is called read-only memory. The abbreviated term is ROM. The storage of program and data in the read-only memory is permanent. That means once it is written, you cannot change it. The storage of program and data in the ROM is permanent. The ROM, the ROM stores some standard processing program supplied by the manufacturers to operate the personal computer. The ROM can only be read by the CPU but it cannot be changed. So programs are written inside read-only memory. Inside ROMs cannot be changed easily. The memories which do not lose their content on failure or power supply are known as non-volatile memories. So the ROM are non-volatile. ROM is further classified into the following three categories known as PROM, EPROM and EPROM. The PROM stands for programmable read-only memory. It can be programmed by the user. Once programmed, the data and instructions in it cannot be changed. EPROM. It stands for Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. It can be reprogrammed to erase the data from it, expose it to ultraviolet light. To reprogram it, erase all the previous data. Generally, we get the mobile software updates. This software update basically flashes our phone and erases and rewriting the revised version of an operating system. WPROM. It stands for Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. The data can be erased by applying electric field, no need of ultraviolet light. We can erase only portions of a chip. Cache memory. A cache memory is a special very high speed memory. It is used to speed up and synchronizing with the high speed CPU. Cache memory is costlier than main memory or disk memory but economical than CPU registers. Cache memory is an extremely fast memory type that acts as a buffer between the random access memory and CPU. Generally, if you can see in this diagram, this is what a cache memory. There are different levels of the cache memory, level 1, level 2 and 3 and so on. Basically, this cache memory works in between the CPU and the random access memory. Now suppose CPU is processing something, so whatever result comes out will get stored in the immediate memory, that's what cache memory. And whatever instruction to be processed next, that will be prior to its execution fetched inside the cache memory and as soon as the CPU is free, the cache memory will then transfer the data and information to the CPU for further processing. That's how the idle time of the CPU can be reduced and we can get the maximum throughput. It holds frequently requested data and instructions so that they are immediately available to the CPU when needed. Cache memory is used to reduce the average time to access data from the main memory. Because if CPU directly access main memory, then it may take time. So the beforehand, the data and information can be stored, can be brought into the cache memory for further processing. So only those amount of data will be there in cache memory, which is to be processed next. The cache is smaller and faster memory, which stores copies of the data from frequently used main memory locations. There are various different independent caches in a CPU, which stores instructions and data. The levels of cache memories are, you can see the level 1 or you can call it as a register, level 2 is a cache memory, level 3 is a main memory and level 4 is a secondary memory. If you consider from the top to bottom, from the CPU's point of view, the next immediate cache memory is your level 1 memory followed by cache level 2 memory and random access memory that is level 3 and 
the mass storage that is secondary storage device that is level 4. If you move from mass storage devices to level 1 cache memory, then bandwidth will increase. The bandwidth means the data processing speed. And if you move from the level 1 to level 4, then latency and size increase. That means the data processing rate or transfer rate reduces from level 1 to level 4. The level, level 1 or register memory. It is a type of memory which in which data is stored and accepted that are immediately stored in CPU. Most commonly used register is accumulator, program counter, address register, etc. So level 1 generally refers to as the registers of the CPU. We have already discussed in the CPU section. Level 2 or cache memory. It is a fastest memory which has faster access time while data is temporarily stored for faster access. Level 3 or main memory. It is a memory on which computer works currently. It is a small in size and once power is off, data no longer stays in this memory. That's what random access memory. And level 4 or secondary memory. It is external memory which is not as far as main memory but data stays permanently in this memory. Catch performance. When a processor needs to read or write a location in the main memory, it first check for the corresponding entry in the cache. If the processor finds that the memory location is in cache, the cache hit has occurred and data is read from cache memory. If a processor does not find the memory location in the cache, a cache miss has occurred. For a cache miss, the cache allocates a new entry and copies in data from the main memory, then the request is fulfilled from the contents of the cache. So basically CPU verifies and prior to its execution CPU gives instruction to the cache memory to bring the next amount of data and instruction to be fetched from the main memory. So while CPU is processing the instruction, the cache keeps the things ready for the instruction and the data to be executed next. So the order of information transfer from microprocessor that is CPU to main memory is the microprocessor gives instruction to the cache memory. The cache basically gives instruction and brings the data from the main memory and then it's applied to the microprocessor. That's how this cycle continues. Secondary memory. The storage capacity of the main memory is very limited. Often it is necessary to store hundreds of millions of bytes of data for the CPU to process. Therefore, additional memory is required in all the computer systems this memory is called auxiliary memory or secondary memory. In this type of memory, the cost per bit of storage is very low. However, the operating speed is slower than that of the primary storage. Huge volume of data are stored here on permanent basis and transferred to the primary storage as and when required. So the secondary memories are floppy disks, hard disk, blu-ray disk, compact disk, magnetic tape memories, DVDs, USB pen drive, memory cards, and so on. Floppy disk. These memories are 5.25 inch or 3.5 inch in diameter. They come in a single or double density as reported on one or both surface of the disk. The capacity of 5.25 inch floppy is 1.2 MB, whereas 3.5 inch is 1.44 MB. It actually was used in earlier days. Nowadays it is outdated, but earlier the size of the data was very small, that's why this floppy disk were used as an auxiliary memory in order to carry the data and information. The way we are getting information nowadays through USB pen drives. It is cheaper than any other storage device and it is portable. The floppy is a low cost device particularly suitable for personal computers. You can see in this diagram, this is what the image showing the floppy disk drive, 3.5 hard drive. A hard disk drive, also hard drive, hard disk or hard drive or disk drive is a device for storing and returning digital information, primarily computer data. It consists of one or more rigid hands hard rapidly rotating disks. You can see in this diagram, there are the rotating disks. You can call it as a platter, coated with magnetic material and with magnetic pads arranged to read or write data to the surfaces and read it from them as and when required. You can see these are the platter, this is a splinter, this is a read and write pad, this is of the arm which moves across, then this is actuator axis, 
which allow uh, activate alarm to move. Then these are the power connectors, jumper blocks, IDE connectors, and activate Blu-ray disc. A Blu-ray disc, often known simply as Blu-ray, it is a digital optical disc data storage format designed to supersede the DVD format. Capable of storing several hours of video in high definition HDTV 720 pixels and 1080 pixels. The main application of Blu-ray is as a medium for video material such as feature, film and for the physical distribution of the video games for the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The name Blu-ray refers to the blue laser which is actually a violet laser used to read the disc which allows information to be stored at a greater density than, than is possible with the longer wavelength red laser used for DVDs. So it stores the data in much higher density as compared to that of DVDs. The plastic disc is around 120 mm 4.7 inch in diameter and 1.2 mm that is 0.047 in thick. The size, the same size as DVDs and CD, conventional or pre Blu-ray disc Excel Blu-ray disc contains 25 GB per layer with dual layer disc supports 50 GB of storage being an industry standard for feature length video disc triple layer disc 100 GB supports and the quadruple layer disc supports 128 GB are available for PD Excel rewriter drive compact disc compact disc is the digital optical disc data storage format that was co-developed by Philips and Sony and released in 1982. The format was originally developed to store and play only sound recording that is CD, DA, but was later adopted by for storage of data CD-ROMs. Several other formats were further derived from this including write once audio and data storage that is CDR, rewritable media that is CDRW, video compact disc that is VCD, super video compact disc that is HVCD, photo CD, picture CD compact disc interactive that is CDI and enhanced music CD etc. The first commercially available audio CD player the Sony CDP101 was released in October 1982 in Japan. Standard CDs have a diameter of 120mm that is 4.7 in inch and can hold up to about 1 hour and 20 minutes of uncompressed audio or about 700 megabytes of information or data. The mini CD has various diameters ranging from 60 to 80mm that is 2.4 to 3.1 inches. They are sometimes used for CD singles storing up to 24 minutes of audio for delivering device drivers. Magnetic tapes. Magnetic tape is a medium for magnetic recording made of thin magnetizable coating on a long narrow strip of plastic film. It was developed in Germany in 1928 based on magnetic wire recording. Devices that record and playback audio and video using magnetic tapes are recorders and videotape recorders respectively. A device that stores computer data or magnetic tape is known as a tape drive. So in Earlier days, there were audio and video cassettes. You can see this a sample of audio tape cassette. Later on, the technology was changed to CD, but nowadays we basically deal with MP3s and other technologies. But earlier days, initially, around uh, it was invented in 1928 in Germany. So this was an audio cassette where different sounds were recording in. It was to be placed in the recorder in order to play. So data and information were actually recorded in the tapes. You can see in the tapes is actually a reference for a video tape having similar structure that is audio containing tape and you need to just put this video tape into the VCR. The VCR will read instructions from the tape and will play the audio and video both on television screen. Magnetic tape revolutionized sound recording and reproduction and broadcasting. It allowed radio which had always been broadcast live to be recorded for data or repeated airing. It allowed gramophone recorders to be recorded in multiple parts, which were then mixed and edited with tolerable loss in quality. It was a key technology in early computer development, allowing unparalleled amounts of data to be mechanically created, stored for longer periods and rapidly accessed. You can also see the use of this technology, so it is being used in some of 
the medium. So you can see you have the debit and the credit card. You have on the back side the magnetic strip. The magnetic strip stores the data and information of the card and the card holder, which is then read by the specialized devices like ATM machines, the swipe devices, and so on. DVDs. The DVD abbreviated for the digital versatile disc or digital video disc is a digital compact disc storage format invented and developed in 1995 and released in late 1996. The medium can store any kind of digital data and is widely used for software and other computer files as well as video program watched using DVD players. DVDs offer higher storage capacity than compact disc while having the same dimension. So in same dimension it stores more amount of data as compared to that of CDs. Pre-recorded DVDs are mass-produced using molding machines that physically stamp data onto the DVDs. Such discs are a form of DVD ROM because data can only be read and not written or erased. Blank recordable DVD discs, that is DVD R and DVD Plus R, can be recorded once using the DVD recorder and then function as a DVD read-only memory. Rewritable DVDs, that is DVD RW or plus RW and DVD RAM can be recorded and erased many times. USB pen drives. A USB flash drive is a data storage device that includes flash memories with an integrated USB interface. It is typically removable, rewritable, and much smaller than an optical disc, most weight loss than 30 grams. Since first appearing, in the market in late 2000, as with virtually all other computer memory devices, storage capacity have risen while prices have dropped. As of March 2016, flash drives with anywhere from 8 to 256 gigabytes were frequently sold, while 512 and 1 terabyte units were less frequent. As of 2018, two TV flash drives were the largest available in terms of storage capacity in USB storage. Some allow up to 1 lakh write re erase cycles depending on the exact type of memory chip base used and are thought to last between 10 and 100 years under normal circumstances. USB flash drives are often used for storage, data backup and transferring of computer files. Compared with the floppy disk or CDs, they are smaller, faster and significantly more capacity and are more durable due to the lack of moving parts. Memory card. A memory card or memory cartridge is an electronic data storage device used for storing digital information, typically using flash memory. These are commonly used in portable electronic devices such as digital cameras, mobile phones, computers, tablets, PDAs, portable media players, video game consoles, synthesizers, electronic keyboards, and digital pianos. The basis for memory card technology is flash memory. It was invented by Fujio Masuoka at Toshiba in 1980 and commercialized by Toshiba in 1987. PC cards, that is PCMCIA, were the first commercial memory card format, that is Type I cards, to come out, but, but are now mainly used in industrial applications and to connect input-output devices such as modems. Since 1994, a number of memory cards format smaller than the PC card arrived. The first one was complex flash and later smart media and miniature card. The desire for smaller cards for cell phones, PDAs and compact digital cameras drove a trend that left the previous generation of compact cards looking big. In 2001, SM alone captured 50% of the digital camera market and CF had captured the professional digital camera market. Camera market. By 2005, however, SD or MMC had nearly taken over smart media spot through not to use the same level and with stiff competition coming from memoristic variants as well complex flash. In industrial and embedded fields, even the venerable PC card like PC MCI memory cards still manage to maintain a niche while in mobile phones and personal digital assistance the memory card has become smaller.